Welcome to the Scottish Property Podcast. This is a show where we aim to educate, inspire and entertain through real life stories and interviews from people in the Scottish property community. As always, thanks for listening and give us a follow on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember to join us at our monthly networking events on the first Wednesday of every month. Tickets are available on our website. So without further ado, we'll just cut straight into this week's podcast. David Liddell, thanks very much for joining us in the Scottish Property Podcast. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Great stuff. First time you've met David, isn't it? Yep. And I've met you quite a few times, actually, yeah. various networking events, and I've been listening to some of your other podcasts that you've been doing as well. Really inspiring story. Uh, I think the listeners will take a lot away from this. Um, obviously, we'll dive into some of your latest deals, and yeah. some of them are quite chunky as well. Um, you know, you're a young guy. What age are you, David? 32. 32, right, so so you're doing good things and we'll go into all that. It's young compared to Nick anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I thought, for some reason I thought you were in your 20s, mate. It's just, no, you've, just you've, look young. You've aged well. But aged, aged a bit recently with property. <laughs> well, you'll be aging even more once this baby comes along as well. Let me tell you, you're due, congratulations, Thank yourself you. and Samantha, your partner, are due uh, October it is. Yeah. So if we have you on the podcast in a year's time, I'm sure you will be looking at that <laughs> age for sure. But anyway... Good that we've got you on first because we record four, we've got four guests coming in the day, right? And I was glad to see you're the first because I'm needing a little bit of the David Liddell energy yeah. here. Because anytime I see you on Instagram, you are wired to the moon on your post, mate. And I do get that. Oh, 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 what is he on? So we were late last night. We were at the networking events. It was a late night. Yeah. So we're in here and uh, we're feeding off that energy. So has yeah. that energy always been with you? Where do you get that from? I don't know. I've just just always been a bit 100 <laughs> mile an hour, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I was a late one last night as well. I got home at two o'clock in the morning from Thursday. So a bit of a project. But yeah, just, just I don't know. Uh, There's always been... A very, very hyper child, and the kind Thurzo, of still am now. I'm sorry, do it. Aye, brilliant. The Thurzo project is one that we're going to get on to, which is yeah. one I've been following you on Instagram. Yeah. So I'd advise anybody listening to this when we start talking about projects and numbers, go on David's Instagram because he's documenting his journey on there, which is really helpful for people as well. Uh, we take this back then to obviously. Where did you grow up? What were you like in your early days? School, uni, first yeah. job, and all the rest of it. Um, okay, so yeah, I was uh, kind of I was born in, in Dunfermline uh, actually, but huh? moved up to um, Dunfermline boy. Uh, moved up to Aberdeen, Ellen specifically, um, when I was about two or three, and yeah, just grew up there. And moved to Glasgow about seven years ago now. Um, I kind of was a little shit in school, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Just always energy. in trouble, like, um, and then kind of, um, yeah, then kind of um, put my head down. Third year, I think, managed to do all right in exams, etc. So then jump into uni, uh, RGU in Aberdeen, um, done mechanical and offshore engineering, right. um, and then we uh, got got a job in oil and gas, as you do if you live in Aberdeen. So. Mm -hmm. um, we, I, I just got a job basically in the hydraulics, so I was a hydraulic design engineer. Is that offshore off or onshore? Onshore, office based. Right. So it was design <clears throat> work mainly from... Is that a graduate know, job out of uni then? Uh, yeah, kind of graduate job out of uni and then uh, worked at three different uh, companies for over the course of the 10 years before I packed it all in and went into property, so... Yeah. Right, nice one. But so, did you go into property while you were still working in the oil and gas industry? Yeah, yeah. so um, basically, I worked for a couple of companies in Aberdeen, then got a job down in uh, down in Glasgow. I quickly moved on to another job, which was uh, working as a contractor. So, was um, doing that, um, and then I kind of was during COVID is when I started, you know, getting into property properly. Um, and was working as a contractor, working from home at the time as well. So, um, yeah, I had a lot of time to spend on it. So. Best of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what was it initially that sparked your interest in property then? You know, you're, you're working at mm. your full-time job. Yeah. I take it you're getting, you know, decent pay for, yeah. for what it is at the time. You know, you're early on in your career, but yeah. I presume like it was a, sound like a good job. You know, you've done all right for yourself so far. Yeah. What was it? Was there something inside you that needed something more? What yeah. was what was the catch for property? Um, I guess well, I bought a property in, uh, in Peterhead. It was my kind of first property about eight years ago. That would have been now, and just run it as a buy to let. 
you know, first time buying a mortgage and kind of just done it a bit on the fly. Which, but which I did as well, to be fair. Yeah, we, don't, yeah, we, we, do. we don't advise it, but do you know what? If it gets your foot in the door and gets you on the ladder. Which is now sold on. So. Um, right. so, um, was, that yeah. supposed to, was that for your, did you ever live in it? No. <laughs> well, I was going to, and then I moved to, I was going to. Uh, how, how was the... Um, uh, moved to Glasgow. So, uh, yeah. How was the Peterhead purchase then? Did you purchase it before the prices went down up there? Or? Um, at the time, I didn't really know. I just no. thought that I, I, it was about 30% below what it was worth. What I year was that? that? I could get... Uh, right. um, I, I just didn't really have any sort of education or knowledge yeah. around property apart from, you know... Very limited, and I just thought, well, I know if I bought something in Ellen, I'd be paying like you know 100, 120 grand and getting about six, seven hundred rent if I'm lucky. And I was looking at Peter Head, I was like, oh, I can get something for 50, still get 500 so, rent. So I was getting you know maybe a hundred pound less rent, but paying half the price. So yeah. that's what I've done, and then uh, bought, the, bought that property. And then I, I was moved to Glasgow and I was driving up and down the road every weekend trying to like do it all myself and everything. So, um Probably not the best use of my what time. What year was that, sorry? That, was right, um, that would have been 2017, I think. Right, so yeah, we're, ta we're talking yeah. about a short time frame. This is yeah. what I find dead interesting about you as well, because, you know, in a short time period, yeah. you've done a heck of a lot. Yeah. You know, you're an I can see you're an action taker just from watching your stories on Instagram. So talk us through, obviously that was the first one. It wasn't really yeah. a deal, if you, it, it was a kind of, so you jumped into that and you got a deal by kind of accident almost yeah. at the end of it. You sold it on, did you? Yeah, so somebody during uh, lockdown who owned the flat above actually chapped my mum's door back in Ellen because I still technically lived there and I was um, just working in Glasgow. Um, and uh, it was the owner of the property above and he was highly motivated to buy it. So I sold it for way over what it was worth as well. I think mm -hmm. it was worth um, 70 Two and a half, something. I think he paid like eight five. He paid eight, 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 three thousand seven hundred and fifty. I think it was. So what are you making out of that work. then? Um, How much profit are you making out of that one? Um, well, I rented it for the three years, right? And then um, I think I worked it out. I made about thirty grand as well. So that gave well. you a wee bit. Uh, was yeah. that a wee light bulb went yeah. off there? Ah, it was. Yeah. So <laughs> that was meant to be my money for moving to Australia because I had a kind of job secured before COVID to move to Australia. Um, where it means Samantha um, and and that was kind of my goal and plan at the time and that got stopped because of Covid so we went um, it was kind of just a bit of uh, the sale got delayed as well that was going to be a tied in well with moving there because I was going to have 30k cash to you know to, to have to move over there even though it was all kind of expenses paid arrangement that I had um, so so yeah that's that's kind of so COVID played a bit of a turn in circle yeah. and, and, and your life then get a bit of a pivot from potentially going to Australia yeah. to... So that was at the end of nine, 2019 mm -hmm. into 2020, yeah. then in November 2020 is when I kind of started looking into property, kind of got past the, the 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 stage of just getting pissed in lockdown and <laughs> needed something else to do, so... <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a quick break, guys, from today's show to talk about selling your property with Prime Property Auctions. Now, myself and Stephen have both used John and Lewis from Prime in the past, and we can personally vouch for their service. They sell vacant and tenanted property, and you get to control the minimum reserve price so that you're not selling your property for peanuts. They pay for all the stuff like photos, videos, and all the marketing stuff up front, so you're not paying anything from the start, and it's a no sale, no fee. Fee. So if you want to check out Prime Property Auctions, then get across to the link on the show notes and speak to the guys. So um, looking back in hindsight, yeah. actually, COVID's probably a good thing for you in the end, wasn't I it? Was, you know, I was disappoint I was disappointed that I never went to Australia, but I'm kind of glad it happened and kind of gave me that wake-up call and just completely changed the trajectory of my life, I think. What do you think, what do you think the wake-up call was? Do you think it was anything to do with the economy or the... Or the getting forced into lockdown or I just well I just really never enjoyed my job to be honest right. it just I'm very hyperactive as you person that's sitting behind a desk all day just staring at a screen and 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 um, I think it was relatively good at what I'd done but I just I always wanted to do more you know I, mm. I when I even when I left um uni got my job I was still I worked as I had a small like kind of handyman business that I'd done as my job when I was at uni 
but I also done and I was like working like three jobs at one point was it I was always just and spent it just as quickly but um <laughs> <laughs> always wanted to um, always wanted to start a business always wanted to to do something that was you know and I think um I just just realized that I was never going to be able to get do the things that I wanted to do um, in life, we, we, even if I was getting paid a you know decent a salary. decent salary, yeah. to see that lockdown period, yeah. did you get like followed to that? Did you have time to then go and kind of like start educating yourself and start no. checking out about property and uh, stuff? I was because I was a contractor. There was no furlough, um, but I was one of the few ones that got kept on because I was almost the only one really doing in my niche right. um, within the engineering department. I was the only one doing hydraulics there, so. Um, I was kept on. Uh, luckily, most of the other contractors were let kind of let go, unfortunately. But did you um, have more I, time? So I continued to work the, the full. Oh, way you through. were working, and then I ended up <coughs> once pop property picked up, um, and we're getting more, you know, kind of sourcing deals through. We we're doing other projects for ourselves, assisted sales, flips, and stuff. And then I just, you know, I thought, right, and then maybe now's the time I could, you know, afford to just take my hours back. So I took it down to like two and a half days. So I worked. Um, two, I had two days off and then a half day on a Friday so I you know, worked, I think it was a Monday a Wednesday I worked so I had like kind of staggered days to keep mm. keep things moving. Um, that's so quite smart because yeah. so you did you did some property educational didn't yeah. you right so you did that and then you sort of launched yourself right in yeah. but to do that so that you could make moves in the property side of yeah. things you cut your, your hours back yeah. so that you weren't working full-time effectively yeah so um that that was good because i was at working from home anyway and uh yeah. you know it gave me Takes a, the more than enough, as well. enough hours yeah, yeah and it kept obviously everything of expenses living costs paid at the same time you know and during yeah. that time then so that was what 2020 2021 so yeah i packed in kind of engineering properly in, in april 22 so just over two years ago now Right. And then you went to, you know, coming out of the education stuff, did you have a clear kind of goal in mind, path in mind, strategy wise? Yeah. You started dabbling a wee bit in lots of different kind of things, didn't you? Yeah, I just I got kind of distracted a bit. We had other businesses between us and um, and now we're just fully focused on property for the last, you know, um, almost just over a year or so. Um, it's our the sole and only focus now. Right, because um, you and Samantha were doing landscaping for a while as well, yeah. weren't you? Ah, it was, yeah. She got so, a little craft on me as well. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it's almost like, and then I, I, that's probably a big learning for me was like, you know, you moved away from engineering and, and you almost thought like you had all this more time and then you're thinking about what else can I like do? And I was just spread myself too thin and, and it was just, probably not a good place to be you know it was quite um quite challenging at many times you know yeah just yeah. juggling just different projects too, different too strategies yeah on the go yeah and it's like reading that book the one thing mm. um was listening to that and somebody recommended it to me and um, we just what, what we're doing here and just stopped it yeah stop the landscaping yeah right okay but the issue is as we know with some of the strategies you were doing i.e flips mm -hmm. assisted sales yeah they're great obviously money spinners but it's chunks of cash yeah right mm -hmm. and you're waiting a long time and it, you've obviously got to live you need to pay your bills absolutely you know what, yeah. what are you doing at this point are you renting have you got a mortgage what are your expenses here so um so one of the things we actually done as well was um, flipped our house into service accommodation right as well to give you that kind of instant uh, yeah. cash flow sort of thing yeah. so that you could spend more time on the property yeah, business so that kind of almost covered our expenses we moved out and um, we ended up we, we quickly we, we talked about it for months and months and then Sam goes right let's just do it and we were out in four weeks didn't have anywhere to go so we ended up living in with parents and that for a lot longer than expected so because yeah. <laughs> we're trying so to that was your very, house in Coat Bridge was it? yeah so that in the very buoyant property market Market, as we know it was quite challenging to find anywhere so um we we felt the brunt of that and we're six yeah. months until we got somewhere else um and but yeah now that that house in coat bridge this month is 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 just absolutely flying it's just uh, produce it's it's gross revenue is just under 6k brilliant uh, what's the target market for that then is contractors is families coming visiting parents and maybe moved away yeah. down south they're coming back up to see family for the summer it's a lot of families in it you know yeah, that's good they're using it a play to, place to gather you know family from canada coming meeting people that used to stay in coat bridge and 
How long has that one been going? Because one of the things that yeah. I always struggle with, right? Because like we did an event last night and we had uh, Callum Graham from B&B Host there. He does a lot of service accommodation right, yeah. stuff. Uh, you know, he that's his business, right? So he threw up a couple of examples, case studies, you know, House and Pollock uh, that he put up, uh, which is just round the corner from me. It's actually quite a rough area, but the mm-hmm. figures that he put up were like, wow. Um, you know, probably on par with, you know, Coat Bridge, not an area where you would think, an SA for visitors would work, but you're talking yeah. about contractor market there. But part of the issue I always have is people say like, you know, six six K gross a month or whatever, or mm-hmm. 45 grand for the year or whatever. But we all know there's a lot of costs in there as well. Yeah, so how long has that one been running? And have you kind of worked it? I always say, look at it over the course of 12 months. Yeah. Can you give us a realistic figure of what you could profit on something like that each month after all expenses? So at the moment, because we, we, we took the management in house as well, so we manage all our own ones and right. not not for clients. Really. Which you would save what twenty yeah. percent, basically yeah. off the Saving top line. Percent. So Samantha deals with that, and um, with the uh, and deals with the cleaners and etc. So so there's a big saving there. Obviously, there's still a cost to us, but we're utilizing like um, overseas VAs and stuff. To we're bringing on a new one actually today, um, and to 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 deal with the administrative side of that. But the the big chunk of it is getting it set up once it's up and running it's yeah. just keeping on top of it um, but yeah sorry to answer your question um, on I'd say on that we're probably netting about you know 50% net you know um, with, with managing it in house so three more. grand a month yeah on so, average over yeah. the uh, if you take in uh, obviously you've got lower occupancy you know over the winter yeah yeah so, so like if you're taking you know I sorry if you're taking it over the the course of the year the last time we reconciled it for year end, which was obviously just a few months ago, it was 87% on average. 87% um, occupancy? Yeah. That's yeah, brilliant. Was good. Yeah, really so, good. Wow. Um, the last few months, I mean, across both of them, well, the one in Bells Hill, not far around the corner as well, it's only just launched a few few weeks ago, um, a few months ago, sorry. Um, and it's, 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 it's just performing phenomenally as well. Um, where so three, average, so where, three grand a month yeah. is net profit yeah. on a good month what would be you know what on average or what would be a bad month i'd say you know over the course of years you could average it out about two grand a month but two grand a month months, still yes, for we're talking about what's a purchase price for that kind of property so i bought that 122 and a half grand actually <laughs> you won't believe this but i paid 22 and a half grand over the home report for it at the right. time and um, because it was my home was emotional and Aye. I couldn't Much believe that needed. you could get a, no. what, a house and after living in Ellen and Aberdeen and high prices I couldn't believe you could get a three bedroom and terrace house for Aye, that. but still <laughs> it's paid off isn't it yeah. if you're yeah. so, <laughs> um, made his money back much work yeah. needed in that refurb wise over the years I've probably maybe only spent about 10 grand on it yeah. right yeah. obviously kitting it out what would you say to somebody? So is that three beds and terrace and terrace yeah. house what, how much is a budget because one of the things talking to Callum Graham last night is yeah. that people are expecting good standards now. Do you know what I mean? There's oh, yeah, that much yeah. choice on Airbnb, Booking.com, yeah. all the rest of it. How much are you having to spend on a house like that to get it up to good short-term yeah, let yeah, standard? Kind of soft furnishings, everything like, to get out of three beds. I see a lot of trips to Ikea and that on your Instagram, or maybe I'm not, not Ikea, not but Ikea, not Ikea, but you're, you're always fit. Yeah. I think you said on one of your stories last week that it's like... Uh, Tetris or something like that. You're trying to get the van filled up yeah, with all your because so, because third zone there was nobody there and we we got all delivered to our house right. and we had our living room full of boxes and then I had a van and took it all up. Which actually we thought, oh, why have we done this? But then we thought, no, this was a good idea because then we got all delivered. We knew how different yeah. and we could go there. You're moving the needle forward. Um, mm. But we used our staging company actually to not stage it, a furniture supplier. They delivered it and installed everything as well. But for a three bed um, property like the one in Coat Bridge, you know, if I was doing that again from scratch, I'd be putting a budget about 10 grand towards that. Right, yeah, good. To, to furnish it. Because I think that's something yeah. that might yeah. get overlooked by a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people start. underestimate think they could do it for like five grand and Aye. stuff. And it's just so you true. don't use IKEA stuff then? No. Not anymore. <laughs> Not no, we've, we have used IKEA and I have built IKEA furniture. <laughs> but that's no, no, never again. But obviously you're looking at scaling this up yeah. now, right? So you're looking at like obviously... Yeah furniture companies that just literally come yeah. in and do it for you right? we've also just bought um spent 14 grand on beds um for a property down south which just came from a 
um, a hotel contract furniture supplier because it's high quality, right. more high end um, furniture, um, and so there, there's so fourteen thousand pound in beds, just beds right. and mattresses. Um, so I think we'll go into that a wee bit more later on. But um, <laughs> sorry, so so at this short period of time where you came out the traps yeah. and pursued all these different things because I've heard you talking about obviously assisted sales flips yeah. deal sourcing yeah all these things so did you just kind of dabble a wee bit and everything and now like give us a summary of kind of what you did there high level don't go into all the specific deals and all that and why you don't do those strategies now because you're very much focused I mm -hmm. feel on pursuing this yeah. kind of like essay commercial yeah. route um, so yeah, we, we I have done kind of a bit of everything, um, and I think that I touched on the kind of focusing on the one thing, which is what I'm trying to do going forward. I'm still doing. We, we we've done. I've done sourcing since since day one of kind of starting the business in property, and still will continue to do that because at the end of the day, that's how I'm getting the, the deals that I'm taking for myself. And on the we've sourcing done. stuff, right? I seen you put some money into yeah. Facebook ads and that as yeah. well. So. Um, if you, you've got quite a bit of experience in that now so how's that been working for you is that a hard gig like it's not as easy um, as just sticking a load of money in and well, getting the deals is it no definitely not because that's what I thought I would do at the start was right. just throw money at a marketing company and I'd, I'd get leads and I'd get deals and how much are you spending on that um, I'm on I, I, in total since I've started um, on Facebook ad spend alone we've spent about 34k I think wow. um, just on the ad spend is um, that paid off in terms of deals, like in well, terms yeah, of yeah, hundred percent. Like, well, it depends how you look at it. Some people, you, you know, if I found the the one farmhouse we've got was a hundred and twenty five grand discount. So, did that if, come through your your so ads? That came through the ads, right? You've got one hundred twenty five yeah. grand discount on a deal, and if you, I just put that one deal to that thirty grand, then I've still yeah. spent thirty grand. Mm. I've got one hundred twenty five grand. The one in Bell's Hill, we got a forty grand discount. Um, it's now running it as, as an SA generating six k a month. We've got a huge discount on it. It's now generating that. You know, I, I, it's hard to really quantify. If I, you probably quantified and allocated all that yeah. revenue to the likes of that spend, and that's you know that's almost worthwhile just with um, yeah. one or two deals. And will you continue to do that? Hmm. Will you continue to do the paid ads? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so well, I'm away for to, sourcing um, deals. Well, you can see the return it's getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, was it a mindset shift on on that, or did you have some mentor or training and marketing and ad spend before doing it, or did you just go yeah? For that? So we we used the marketing companies a couple of times, just never really got any results. Yeah. And then I was kind of got some advice from someone who's kind of quite good at marketing mm -hmm. um, and very successful at a young age. Um, got some advice from them, and they're like, "You're never going to get what you want." By really paying someone in this kind of this kind of niche, mm -hmm. um, so I, I yeah, I basically done a course on marketing, nice. Facebook marketing, and made that really a, a sole focus. We ran ads for, and then the, I had the kind of benefit of running ads for 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 cleaning, running ads for the landscape, we run ads for property. So we're spending a lot like between yeah. these, which gave me a lot of um, exp like a lot of practice. Yeah, uh, and Facebook ads and how to write the copy and I spent I end up not learning anything about property at all and just focus on so learning not, marketing, yeah. learning copywriting, learning um, you know, and it's uh, a viable skill sets, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. We we should all be doing it for our yeah. businesses. Yeah. To be to be fair, we should all be allocating a budget yeah. for that marketing stuff. What would you say? Because I've seen various different ads. Some of your ads are like videos. You know, yeah. some of them are like pictures, and you know add copy and all the rest of it is there any kind of because they say you should try different yeah. uh, variables of the creative so video copy yeah. pictures or this but is there anything or any one ad that's kind of done quite well in terms of lead generation and the, yeah the, it, it's always kind of quite surprising i find which one does the best and Normally it's the one you put the least effort into. <laughs> you spend the <laughs> most time shooting a video, shit. paying somebody to create the video, um, thinking about it, what you're going to do. You know, I've done a, a video with like a box in my head and throwing money into a box. And, <laughs> That's the, yeah, and, I remember and, that one. Um, uh, other videos, uh, the ones that Samantha done, <laughs> tend to always work well, right. um, better so than me. So better than her in front of the <laughs> yeah. camera, that's what you're saying. That's where you're going wrong, Stephen. Uh, <laughs> and a very basic one, on them. a very basic one, which was just like kind of, I found a, a 
stock image online and it um, and I used that and just put a banner on it, basically some text at the top, text at the bottom, and 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 just you know shouted out exactly what I wanted, the type of property I wanted, and that's how I got the the one in um, the one in County Durham. I got that assisted sale in Hamilton from the same ad, which was uh, which were all great great numbers on both of them. Um, I think that's probably the best performing one we've had um, so far. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Do you do, when you find lad like that? Do you yeah. do you double down on it and spend more money or try and increase the range? Or yeah, so yeah. that yeah, definitely did after that Hamilton deal a couple of years back came out the back. I was like, right, I'll try all these different variations <laughs> of it, and and it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I think I tried to maybe change things too much, or was it just luck? But then we did, you know, get a another deal from it down the you know nearly two years down the line. Yeah. Um, and and one thing that I'd done back in April. Um, last year was, you know, I was at an event and they were like, you know, uh, it's uh, the, an ads guy put up on a banner said, shit, ads work um, on this event I was at. And I thought, well, I'll just go back and use some of the old content I had. And it was the outside, like one of the first flips I've ever done. And I was like, looked a lot younger and I was shaking and like, you could just tell it's so now. So I relaunched that and just changed it. Put a, put a banner on it. We got a deal for a client over in Alexandria, which you know was going to turn into SA. And then we uh, got a got that deal in uh, Bell's Hill, which is now running nice. SA as well. So even though like I would say that would be my least favourite ad yeah. out of a lot of them, yeah. still, per- got, still performed. Yeah, yeah. still performed. It's not really predictable then, is it? You yeah. just need to keep trying stuff, keep testing. Um, so what's your, what's been your kind of biggest win then so far to date in terms of You've come out of it and go, wow, that was a good one. Yeah, um, I de- at the moment definitely Thurzo, the the property in Thurzo, but it's it's not running yet. Yeah, let's I, talk about Thurzo yeah. then, because <laughs> the first time I seen this, I saw a view and pe- again go to David's Instagram, but uh, I saw a view out onto the sea, crashing waves over the beach. Yeah. Over Thur- is it which beach is it up in Thurzo? Just Thurzo Beach. Just Thurzo Beach. Beach. Yeah, yeah. Because so then you, if you go along, you've got like Dunnett Bay and all that. Dunnett Bay, stuff. yeah, yeah. But it's just Thurzo Beach. There. The main it's, Thurzo yeah, Beach. Yeah. And it's literally overlooking the beach. Yeah. I mean, sits up on the hill. Yeah, there's the, the kind of what the Esplanade and pathway in front of us. And then, the, you know, the beach is basically there. You could almost jump onto the beach. I was like, ah, that is floor. something <laughs> else. Imagine yeah. setting up your wee workstation there, man, and right. having that as a home office. Yeah. But I know you've got other plans for it. So, what? Is the first of all describe the property? Yeah, how much you paid for it and what the plan is for it. So it's uh so it once was I'll go back a wee bit. It once was I'm at a old inn called the Marine Inn. Um, so back in the day it used to be a pub and then have some accommodation um, above above the pub, kind of your old typical um fishing village uh, pub that used to be filled fishermen um, and stuff. What's uh, yeah. the size of the property? Three hundred and eighty meters squared. And um, square, so me- it, square meters, yeah, three hundred and eighty square meters, right? Uh, so, um, and they basically bought the old owners bought it as a stead in back in two thousand eight. Spent four years converting it, uh, done a very good job of it. So in two thousand twelve, they kind of moved in and run it as a B and B and lived in it at the same time. Um, so. It, it's been very well refurbished. It's not your typical property that's fucked that you want to, excuse my language, you need to want to add value to, mm-hmm. want to refurb and, you know. How did you find uh, the property? On the market? Um, the agent? I, yeah, we found it actually on the market and it's one of the only, very few properties that I've actually got from being on market because um, we were looking at another deal in Thurso. Um, that was kind of off market um, and we, we kind of had that secured and it ended up not panning out due to commercial mm. valuations not f- being in line and stuff. Um, what was the pull we, to th- Thurzo then, sorry? What's that? What was the pull to Thurzo initially? Like what was... You just- um, I knew that there was going to be a heavy heavy demand there for nice. contra- contractors. And, and You're thinking, are you thinking NC500 as well? As well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that as well. So for the summer yeah. months, yeah. NC500 is like one of those ones that it was always there. Yeah, <laughs> like, to be there for hundreds the, of years. Yeah, yeah. You, you did a trip on it, didn't you, last year? Where you're, you're yeah, I, I've, I grew up, that's where I did my family holidays, like up 
at that neck of the woods like aye. constantly I know you yeah. grew up in Inverness aye. Still, it's that, but aye, it's like the Scottish Tourism Board just came up with this name <laughs> almost like I think it was like Route 66 we'll just make up Scotland's NC500 that's been a it's massive success huge push for it but huge. there's a lot of guys in the community that, that live up there and fucking hate it oh, because it. it's, it's only in the last 10 years or so it's kind of became um, something isn't yeah. it it's, it seems to be getting uh, bigger yeah. and bigger I mean that road that goes through Thurso after being there for you know um, well been there for a week as of you know just past um, and then a few days a couple of weeks ago I mean that, the road's just car 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 uh, you'd think it was like the M8 or something uh, yeah, well I think it's uh, <laughs> um, like the, the camper vans is yeah. met, you know not, number of camper vans over the summer are unbelievable um, but obviously you've talked about why Thurso but give us the price then how much you pay for that um, so it was um, 385,000 for 380 Nice. So, and what, right. what was the valuation when you bought it? Um, so the home report, so the residential home report was four two five. That was a good discount. Um, ah, yeah. you would so, think you think with it being NC five hundred and obviously trading as a B and B, there would be loads of interest. Mm, like, yeah, um, I just think it was. Uh, you just need to look the other way. From the majority of people, probably wouldn't have seen the potential in that. Right. It wasn't really a home, to be honest. It's, it's yeah, it's like a trying business. to sell it as a home. It's ah, really, right. It's not really. So, it, yeah, it's a home for for them definitely. But it's it's not like a property. Who wants a big six? Well, it's, it's essentially six, seven bedroom house. Uh, uh, it's no garden, in. you know. Yeah. It's got no garden. You and know? did you have to jump uh, in there quick, or was it on the market for a wee while? I was or? On the market for three years or something. Yeah, that just shows right. you the opportunities yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I just I, seen, I, I seen it as a comparable to the other property, yeah. you know, and and walked past it and then thought and then never went to view it and then the next time we went up to see this other property, I'm talking about we, I goes, you know what? I'm just going to book a viewing. Um, and I booked it and then I almost never went. Right. I, 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 it's a long I, way for a I, viewing. I How many hours? No, because we're already there. Oh, sorry, you were up there. So we, we we got the train up and everything, so I could work on the train to view this other property for the second Aye. time. And then I, I booked the viewing, and then I, all, I basically emailed the estate agent, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I, I need to look back, but I'm pretty sure I cancelled it. And then I went, oh, no, actually, I want to go. <laughs> so, so I almost never went to see it, and then, you know, I went to see it, and then I'd sat on the train on the way home. I, I You know, we, I drew on the floor plan out, basically on, mm. on a PDF of what I was wanting to do, worked out my numbers from the service accommodation. Okay, um, so model. the plan is, what is the plan for the interior? Yeah. Split up, how are you going to split it up inside and what, what's it going to function as? So it's going to fun function as essentially what I, uh, it would be classed as an apart hotel. So nice. it'll be six individual lettable units, so s six different parties could... Um, Self-contained yeah. kitchen facilities. Well, kitchenettes in each of them as well. So, and... so there's going to be a kind of a, a range. So there'll be because because of the way it's laid out really well already. So there's three rooms on the first floor, and um, that were already B and B rooms. So basically, it's just a slight refresh on them, which is already basically done. Mm -hmm. um, but um, and then there's the dining area and the big sunroom that you've mentioned yeah. that you've seen me sitting in and seen in, on my. Uh, social media so that'll be at we'll get a shower added in there and there's already a toilet and sink yeah. so a shower added in there and then that's another uh, room that'll probably be the high, that will be the highest priced room yeah. out of the lot because it's a big big room we'll get a wee kitchenette in it and it's got the sunroom as well absolutely and then upstairs onto the first floor we have um basically it's like a three bedroom flat essentially so um that is just to 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 basically keep the cost down and um, save having to do a lot of work it's unnecessary we're just going to run that it's like a three bedroom service accommodation you know right. so it's just like a, a larger larger unit so they'll get the whole first floor and um, the stairway is still communal um, and then the stairway up to the, the the second floor where there's like um, just there's been a kind of dormer put into the roof space um, at the front and the back and there's a balcony at the back which is south facing and then there's kind of the, the big um, I can't remember the name for them but big floor ceiling windows um, that kind of open up f facing out oh, onto yeah. Thurso Beach and, and back the way as well so it's got it's the best views out the lot um, and it's got the balcony so okay. that'll be a premium room as well yeah. So currently residential right? Was yeah. it so, it's getting sold as a residential yeah. house? Yes, yeah. it was. Right. Yeah. So, do you to make that in a power hotel? Do yeah. you have to get a planning change of use? So we're going for material. So we're going for um, a letter of comfort initially, and then to a change of use. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Talk us through briefly. High level. I know it's early yeah. days. Right. 
I mean, normally, if you were purchasing something like that, most people would be, what, looking at, like, getting a bridging loan or a... Yeah. What, how else could you finance it? It's just a residential yeah, property. Investor, so, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Could you, yeah, so could you do a buy it light on that? I mean... Yeah, I don't see why not. Um, so how did you do it? <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> The bridging, we've got bridging finance on it, so it's 12 month bridge, um, and we've used a mix of investor funds. So, we basically it's like a j joint venture, um, okay. the, where I've raised the funds from other parties, they've came on as shareholders. How many people? Um, so there's two others involved, right? right. Yeah, yeah. So there's two others and involved. Do you buy their shareholders out once their money's paid back? Or no, it's just it? a continuous ah, nice. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, split the profits, yeah. yeah it's just a ways. profit split. The 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 um, as per the shareholding, yeah, mm. yeah, so right, okay. and, and my um, yeah, so and so we need to look at the numbers here. So, how much did you did you put in any of your own money into that deal? Uh, I've put in some cash from my other business, but essentially it's investor funds anyway. So, um, but yeah, we put in 40k from my end, yeah, right. And then obviously, you know, you've got the keys now, you're in there, you've, you're on a bridge in finance, so obviously that that's ticking away. What's the plan to get off of that? Because that can be expe expensive. Yep. So you have to do, have you got to do a refurb? Like what's how so much level of work so, involved? So at the moment, how much? We, at the moment, so the plan, there's kind of a, a kind of phased approach here. So the plan is to run these four rooms currently. Right. Um, you know, that we've just, they're, they're ready to go now. We'll mm -hmm. probably be maybe another a week or so before it's actually online. We, um, are then going to once the the, the building war and, and all the drawings are done, we're getting this fully like interior designed by our architect who's um got a lot of hotel, hotel experience. So it'll be like, you know, all the rooms will be properly designed out like and so it looks and feels like a hotel. Um, you know, from where the light switches are mm. positioned, where you know, where the headboard is and it's gonna have a proper high quality hotel feel and it'll be more high quality furniture put in it. Um, down the line but you know obviously that's going to take two three months to to get that done and um, to get the the building warrant approved but there's not much to be done and um, with regards to just building warrant because it's just putting in additional shower and a few wee changes um, and then we're going to obviously the, the as we're doing that we're going to do that in line with the kind of use class change um to uh class seven yeah and we, right. so after you get all this uh, trading yep. income coming in. Are you then going for a revaluation? Yeah, for on, on a commercial commercial, commercial mortgage. So yeah. the commercial valuation kind of our prediction on the commercial value based on the the, the revenue, the kind of industry standard way of uh, evaluating um, and um, yeah of of hotels, which in Thurso I believe is a seven multiplier mm -hmm. of the net profit. So fifty percent of the net. Of the gross revenue is the essentially the net profit is a rule of thumb for the industry, and um, so we'll be at about two hundred and twenty gross once it's fully stabilised. Is my prediction for, um, and that's only a seventy percent. Sorry, hold on, I'm trying to take this in because this is really good for listeners. Yeah. Really good stuff. Two hundred and twenty gross grand yeah. gross, revenue. Gross revenue. What this will per be. year? Per year, yeah. Right. The times that by. So, so half of that, essentially. Ha, sorry. The net. Like so times it by seven. And then they times that by seven to get a valuation. Oh, so that would yeah. be 770. So, yeah. so say 800k roughly. Yeah. Nice. Round about 800k. Do need a trading history a couple of years before they'll give you yeah, that valuation? So, or are they? Yeah, so eight, um, sorry, yeah, 18 months nice. uh, roughly. Um, it's kind of the, the standard um, mm. from from what I know. Um, and But we'll look at, we, we will refinance kind of in the interim. Yeah. Um, to, onto, pay the, to pay off the bridge. Know, somewhere between the, you know, mm. between the, the 400 that was valued at when we bought it and that 800 obviously there's a huge uplift there but mm. we're not spent it's not like we're spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands on the refurb to get there as i said it's yeah. in very good condition wow, already this is brilliant, isn't good, it? yeah. it's um you know it's it's more that interior fit out right. and, mm. and putting a shower and a, a door and, uh -huh. and and rejigging it and just getting it compliant and stuff as well and you um, think um lender's appetite for that will be fine with it with the location we've already, yeah mm. yeah kind of lined that up and, and had chats with valuers and and, um, and lenders for that. Uh, will you like to get the maximum L loan to value yeah. off of that end valuation? Yeah. After the after the say say six months to get it to the point where it's fully operating and the point 
we want to be at with the, the six separate areas. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously the 18 months of books. So two years down the line, it'll be, you know, at least more than that, all money all money out of it. But it's, you're and not waiting in, a wee yeah. bit longer. Yeah. What that, do you have a good cash flow asset the, though? The reward at the back end Aye, is yeah. much, much greater than, you know, a couple, of things, a couple of things going through my head here, right? So interesting that you've kind of got these shareholders yeah. in effect that you're in a joint venture. Yeah. Set up a, is that a company effectively you've set up for um, that so, individual so, project? So for each of these big, um, bigger SA units, we, we've we set up separate SPVs and my holding company holds the shares and mm. it's just the most tax efficient structure that we've right. set up. So yeah. you're tied in with these people now rather than actually just doing like a loan agreement for the funds. Because yeah. I'm thinking to myself, well, at the end of that, getting that significant uplift, would you know have been better just getting the loan and then paying them back after you get the refinance? Because then you would be left with the asset yourself. Yeah, yeah you would. But um, I mean, that can, when you're at, uh, maybe in the earlier stages of property, which which I believe that I probably still am, even though I've been in it for like, for, you know, properly for four years, coming up to four years now, it's, it's much easier to get that larger sums of money yeah. for, Get and and have somebody invested in the project, the vision that you know. Right. So like, investors are wanting a wee bit more skin in the game, then. Yeah, yeah. A wee bit more. I'm happy to I'm happy to do that because I mean, at the end of the day, we're getting a fantastic property. We're Aye. getting something yeah. that generates huge amount of revenue. They're kind of almost just silent shareholders. I'm the one leading the way, getting experience. Yeah. You're yeah. the one doing the five hour drives up and down. Yeah, I am. Filling yes. the vans. Yeah. Are they bringing else, anything else to the table? Like just the funds or? Just things? funds, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and really just funds, mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm, I'm doing everything. I'm the direct, sole director, and um, that's kind of how we're- So we're once working. this is all up and running, functioning, yeah. I mean, you've obviously done your projections. You've, yeah. uh, you've, you've obviously got excited with the numbers. Yeah, yeah. What personally out of it would you be hoping to net so each month roughly so from Thursday specifically Aye, from that one from project from Thursday specifically we we all interested interest deductions kind of you know contingencies in place it would be net in ninety. 90 a year 90 a year so ah. I'll get 30 out of that yeah. that's, that's good 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 goal you'll get me. aye because you're going to split yeah. that so yeah. you'll get 30 right okay that's good man so that's that was yeah. like nice my first project. wage at engineering was to, I think, that yeah. just shows you what's possible replace, yeah, replace a wage yeah. from yeah. one property yeah. Yeah. and what I love about that is that property been sat there and nobody yeah. else has realised that yeah. opportunity yeah so they're, I mean, they're on the market, aren't they? They're, the, the opportunities are there if you, yeah. you look wide enough. And I suppose yeah. you almost cancelled it as well and yeah, dismissed absolutely. it. It was like, look that little bit deeper. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've always kind of been focused on off-market stuff and um, I almost don't even really look on right move unless yeah. I'm looking at comparables. But um, I, I've kind of not really bother much uh, with right move and, and speaking uh, yeah. at estate agents and I think a yeah, lot of people talk yeah. about that like <laughs> yeah the, the gold's in the off market and, but yeah. there is actually gold sitting right on the yeah, market yeah, and, absolutely. Pl and plain sight for people to see if you just look yeah. at it you know where, where no one else is looking a lot yeah. of the time and, and Samantha's going to be running the kind of she'll be doing the management of it with it uh, getting the bookings and all that in yeah so we're, in -house. we're, we're doing it all we'll take the management in, in house as well so we're essentially you know we we're not just doing it for nothing we're, we're you know we're getting paid by our other companies to do the management mm, yeah obviously there's a cost to that so we we generate um a, making a business out of that as well we can with the larger units it's almost its own little economy so uh own little business you know with its own full-time cleaners because the you know it's a lot to service yeah, that, yeah. Uh, you know especially if you're having yeah. one night stays and um, which you typically wouldn't have with like a three bed in Coat Bridge. Mm -hmm. Lots of change over North Coast, 500 people coming yeah. in for one night and leaving. So, so it'll have its own full time kind of staff and stuff and, 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 and own like marketing Avenue own social media, Instagram and be mm -hmm. its own entity in a way. So, mm -hmm. um, we believe that bringing that in house and giving it the love and attention that we think it needs to be able yeah. to properly market it, um, is, is why we've done that. And we're going to build a, a brand around that, uh, which we're working on at the moment, which will each of these properties will come under, um, and it'll be more like a kind of uh, more like a hotel kind of feel, a as brand, opposed to uh, a, a, a short term let kind mm -hmm. of management company. Feel. Well, it's interesting because yeah. I read that somewhere, and I can't remember it was that hot a hotel chain. Basically, they are buying up all these kind of wee village hotels round about the NC five hundreds. Are they? I can't remember what the name of the chain is, but oh. I think it's like, it's either based down in Central Belt or even England and they're buying up all these, you'll, you'll see them, you know, 
quite run down mm, yeah. sort of yeah. rural hotels yeah, that have yeah. just had no investment for years and years and years yeah. you know and they're buying them up yeah. so you think you're on to something there uh, real exciting I, I mean we've got five minutes left I don't want to really go into too much detail because mm. I'm presuming it's a similar structure the one down in, in England whereabouts is that the other big one you've got it's in County Durham like it's just um, I, it's just near like Sedgefield you're going to be yeah. putting in the miles here by the way yeah. up down I've, the country, I've only been to it twice yeah. right the refurb's done it's furniture next week so is that a wee bit ahead then are you a bit ahead but is that in terms of the schedule, yeah, I the refurb got done quicker than what we planned, so that was good. So and again, we're talking about a four hundred and fifty grand purchase or something. Uh, yeah, it was valued at six hundred. We secured it uh, four seven five, um, and yeah, it's it's very similar numbers to to Thurzo, to be honest, with the nightly rates. So uh-huh. we knew maybe lower occupancy slightly, which we we've predicted lower occupancy, so we've worked our numbers on that. Uh, but you kind of all in all. The very close numbers wise, mm. um, it's four and a half thousand square foot. You know, it'd be seven hundred pound to a thousand pound a night, and that's going to be because it's such a big property. That's you're focused on like groups and stuff like that, aren't you? You want like yeah, that that's not like the the, the kind of part hotel multiple unit um structure. There, it's just one. One unit. One mm-hmm. unit. Um, so, like, yeah, um, go for your fortieth birthday, yeah. take your family, that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, twenty guests. Yeah. Uh, it's got um, sauna, hot tub. It's got games room. It's going to have like a projector. It's got um, nice. It's actually got a swimming pool, but it's been floored over. So that's some. Uh, that's some going else as well. To uncover it. No, <laughs> not at the moment. <laughs> Get making plans. money first. Yeah. Yeah. See if you, uh, <laughs> see if again, do. guys, go and look at these pictures because yeah. these these projects are unbelievable that he's doing. So um, is that is that going to be tied to the same brand? And there's Thurzo then, so there's a link or is it um, just going to be separate? Uh, uh, we're, we're not sure about that because yeah. we're wanting to kind of make it a, the, the brand is going to kind of be a Scottish feel, but um, so we're not sure about that one yet, right. but there's there's a, probably a way we could we could slip it in. Yeah, yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Right, so the big question is between yeah. these two projects, right, which you've done pretty yeah. much what, I mean, this year, uh, we're, we're middle of the year, those yeah. two have been pretty much... yeah. In the last six months? Well, yeah, it's kind of the start of the year, just really start decided year. to go, go right. for it and secure these, yeah. How much investor money have you raised in that time? 700k. Nice. That's unbelievable. You're going. Man. Yeah. And that is the power, would you yeah. say that is the power of building a personal brand on social media? Has that come from family, friends, people that you've not known? Where's the money coming from? Um, yeah, I definitely. It's keeping consistent on social media, and then people that are, that have kind of been following me for a year, then ended for years, and then end up reaching out after off the back of some posts. And it's one thing I actually regret is not really, really go. I I I feel I've not really put that much effort into social media, really, and I've kind of half arsed it, but I have I kind of have stayed consistent in some way. Um, and I definitely think that's been um, a key factor in, in being able to to do what I've done. There. But if people are starting out and going, how the fuck can he get 700,000? How can I get that? How can I buy these properties? Yeah. Like, who are these people that are investing in you? What are they seeing in you that... You know, there's loads of other people out there putting out content. It, I guess it's, you know, being consistent there and then, then them almost getting to know you and like you and trust you without even actually being in a room with you. Um, and then, you know, showing the project, showcasing what you can do, showcasing your knowledge and then, you know, making an offering for them that's attractive as well. Because if you're just another person that's trying to get 200k for 10 percent then we'll join the queue you know and is there any is, <laughs> ah, exactly yeah that's so what i'm saying so you need to stand in, you're gonna get be getting you know 30 30k revenue for for 20 years you know yeah. they're gonna get end up getting um, the majority of their money back very quickly it's, it's, a, it's a cracking deal for them mm. okay and have yeah, you got I any like uh, family and friends in that circle as well and that those investor funds uh, there, there's one family member but yeah. the majority of it's just people that i've met through 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 network and through through groups through um yeah the, um through wow. business networking and how many yeah. people are you you working with then out of that out of that fund uh, how many individuals uh Okay, I don't even know off the top of my head, but you know, there's, um, you know, some people. No, I'm just wondering, are people putting in like 100, no, no. 200, or is no, it 50k? I don't know exactly the number. I'd have to sit here. Aye, and count, no. But yeah, it's, I'm not taking like 20k here. 20K Aye, that's there. what I mean. So, you know, 100 yeah. plus. Yeah. What's yeah. your biggest shareholder investor? Um, How much? 
200k, yeah, 200k. 200, that's brilliant. Yeah. It? it just shows you the power of it. Yeah. And I've never done it before. I've never asked yeah. anyone for money. It's something I really want to do in the future. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use... Start by fucking giving your money out. <laughs> I'll, start, <laughs> I'll start by buying a fucking property, first of all. <laughs> I've not done that for a few years. <laughs> so that'll come. <laughs> so, um, I, I mean, the, I love your energy, mate. Mm. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. You know, it's about... You know, you follow a lot of people and you think, are they actually doing that? But I see you sitting in that sunroom with the keys. You're in that property, so you've obviously yeah. got, you know, you're doing it. You've you've completed on it. Yeah. You know, uh, your projected figures, I'm sure, will come true as well. Yeah. Um, you know, where can people reach out to you? Are you looking for more? You're always, I presume you're always looking for more money as well. Uh, absolutely. We've got, got a couple of projects secure that, you know, that's the, much bigger than any of these even put together. Um, so we're always looking for for new partners to kind kind of come on board. New investors, uh, best way to reach out to me is just just search me on LinkedIn and Instagram is where I'm most active. Uh, David Liddell, uh, L I D D E L L, not like the shop. Um, so <laughs> and the way you caught my attention was you popped up on Instagram. Fucking Loch Lomond, bare water, a uh, barefoot water skiing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's obviously another thing that you do. Which uh, fuck, if you slam, it, what is it, sixty uh, sixty kilometers an hour? So. Uh, well, <laughs> possibly, but I uh, for, for about between forty and forty five, which is probably about sixty kilometers an hour. Yeah. If you slam at that speed on the water, that's like um, concrete, right? You just bounce, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you bounce a few but times. Any water skis? Have you ever seen that before? No. It's fucking metal. Go and have a look at it. Yeah, yeah I've Wait, not done it in a while. Sold my what? boat to to, 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 to fund, 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 fun, fun deals, take away distractions, have you? and that as well. That's yeah, what. That's headaches, your, headaches. your long term goals. I. I yeah, heard somewhere is get a house on no, a lake. lake. Yeah, hundred. That's that's pinned right in front of my, um, right above me where my screens are in my o- home office. It's a big lake house. So, what else motivates you? Um, I don't know. I've just just I've just like obsessed with business and property now. You know, I, I I've I've stopped drinking, stopped going out, stopped doing anything that's that's negative, and kind of just I'm just obsessed with. My business now, mm-hmm. and sort of kind of all I think about me. Really? Do you think you Dead need some... that obsessiveness? Like, I always yeah. have that debate with people that think, Oh, no, balance, you should still go out, you should still drink. I'm like, Fuck yeah. that. If you want to yeah. do something, something has to sacrifice. Yeah. Do you think that's been key to your success the last couple of years of just going yeah. all in? Yeah, I mean, the last six months certainly, I yeah. just stopped on the 2nd of January, stopped drinking, and, and, and just goes, Right, I'm super focused now. I just feel like I'm always on my, my mindset, so I'm always kind of. Uh, got clarity there's mm-hmm. no lost days there's no fuzziness there's um no distraction and 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 you know even like getting rid of my boat which was causing me a headache like getting rid of these th- you know things i was like right i could just like not do that and not waste and waste days and i'll go and get that again down the line yeah. and have a bit of delay on on, on delayed gratification yeah, absolutely short-term sacrifices yeah. go for it man right nice one so Love that's it. us thank you very much thank for you. coming in and uh, certainly woke me up. I told you this would be a high energy <laughs> podcast. Sorry for interrupting you and stuff like that, but I feel like uh, we're, we're limited time, so what try okay, and get as cheers. much out of you as possible. So thank you thank for you. coming on. Cheers. Thanks for enjoy the chat. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers. Thank you.